Matt fans, in QGIS 3, we no longer have the option to turn on the fly projection on or off. This means that you may need to play around with your settings in order to get QGIS 3 to behave the way you would like it to. Now, if you go to settings up here, you can go to options, and this will be for your general QGIS 3 settings. You can change those there. If you want to change your particular project settings, you can go to project and you can go to properties and that will change your particular project settings. Now, in some cases, the project settings will override the default settings. If we look at the default settings that I have currently set up for CRS, you can see there's no on the fly projection mentioned here anymore. And currently for a default CRS for new projects, I have 4326 set, which is WGS84. When a new layer is created or a layer is loaded that has no CRS, I'm asking QGIS to prompt me. So if I bring something in that has no CRS attached to it or I make a new layer, QGIS is going to say, hey, what do you want to use? There are other options, but I prefer to be prompted. We've also got default datum transformations, and I'll get to those in a little while. But for now, our default CRS is 4326. So I'm going to OK that. And if I start a new project, then down in the bottom right, you can see that our setting is for WGS84. So our CRS is WGS84. What happens if I bring in a layer? So I have a blank project, there's nothing in it. I'm going to bring in a Bing Virtual Earth. And most of these base maps, if you need to learn how to add all these base maps to QGIS, I have another video for that. But if I want to bring in Bing Virtual Earth, I'll just drag and drop that in there. There it is. Now this does not look like 4326 to me. And if I look down in the right hand corner, you can see that it's switched. And currently our CRS is pseudo Mercator. That indicates that the first layer that we bring into a QGIS project is going to change our CRS. So what does this mean? Well, not much at the moment. I work in the UK as well as other places, but I live in the UK and the UK looks pretty normal. So my base map seems to be doing fine. But what happens if I go down here and change my CRS to what I wanted it to be, which was 4326. So I'm just going to find that down here. You can also search. I like to search by EPSG code because it's just more precise and there's WGS84. So watch what happens to the shape of the UK if I bring in this CRS. So now my project CRS is going to be 4326. Okay, that. And we have a rather squashed and flat uh, UK. This is okay. We know that QGIS3 is projecting on the fly. So that's fine. It's taken our base map and it's reprojected it. So this is what it would look like in 4326. Now that I've set my project setting to where I wanted it to be, if I was to add a vector layer, I'm going to go and I'm going to use some OS data. I've got this woodland file here. And I know that this is in the CRS of British National Grid. So I'm going to add that in. And you can see down here it's appeared. And if I zoom into this, this looks fine. We've brought in the woodland layer. And if I change my properties of this woodland layer, I'm just going to make it a little bit transparent so we can see what's happening underneath. OK, that. And we can see that it covers the woodland as we'd expect. However, it's still in this kind of squished EPSG 4326. So WGS 84. Now what I could do, and this is quite a nice thing about QGIS 3. If I just go to my project settings and I change this to British National Grid, which is EPSG code 27700. And OK, that. Bink. Everything changes. And that also looks pretty good. So 
I'm quite confident that these are lining up and if we zoom back out we can see that the UK now looks like it should do. Now there's a clue in the name with British National Grid. It works for Britain, it's nice for Britain, but for the rest of the world it is not that great. And lots of countries have their own particular CRSs. So if we were to zoom out on our global Bing Virtual Earth base map, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, it's going to struggle. And it's not really surprising. It's trying to do a lot of stuff, and this is the outcome. You can see that this base map no longer looks like it should do. But if we're working in the UK, that's fine, because under normal circumstances, we're going to be zoomed into an area of interest, which is the UK. And the Bing base map doesn't have any problem reprojecting to that. So that's all good. So that's the first thing that I wanted to point out. The next thing, I mentioned it earlier, is transformations. So let's take a look at those. So I'm back in my map and all I have here is Bing Virtual Earth and you can see that our EPSG is 3857. One of the things that you can set in the overall QGIS settings up here, if I go to Options, you can ask QGIS to ask for datum transformation if several are available. And the reason for that is depending on where you are in the world, there might be several different transformations available. So for example, NAD27, which is a North American datum, or NAD83. They have several different ways that you can transform them to WGS84 and vice versa. So depending on which part of the states you're working in, you might want to choose a different transformation. Now, based on location, QGIS is pretty good at picking up what transformation will be best. So if you don't ask for this, it's going to go for what it has been programmed to say is best. Sometimes you may want finer control over that, and so you can ask for the datum transformation if several are available. So I'm going to OK that. And here we have our pseudo Mercator map. Now, this is great, but just to reiterate the point of what can happen if we change our CRS, I'm going to change our project CRS to 4326. Now this is in the same datum as pseudo Mercator. And if I apply that, our map changes and everything's fine. It's a little bit squished, but that's okay. Now I'm going to add in my vector layer, and this is in British National Grid. So if I add this in, Again, everything's fine, it's projected on the fly, and there we go. But this is a little bit squished and it looks a little bit weird, so if I wanted to change this project CRS to British National Grid, if I go down here and change my project CRS to 27700, British National Grid, and OK that, then we get hit with our datum transformations. So our source CRS is pseudo Mercator and it's being forced into British National Grid. And here we have a list of all the available transformations. If you click on one of these, down in the bottom right, it will tell you more information about the transformation. And it also gives you an EPSG code for it. So you can Google that and find out more about it. Now the top one is gonna be the oil exploration and the accuracy is better than 4 meters, generally better than 2 meters. Other options available, you can see how the accuracy starts to drop. We've got 10, 10 and 15 in the X, Y and Z axes, 5, 5 and 6, and so on. So that's just a way to get a little finer control over what's happening when things are being transformed. So I'll OK that. There we have our UK National Grid map and our UK National Grid data all sitting nicely on a base map which originated in pseudo web Mercator. I hope that's helped clear some things up with CRS and given you a little intro to it and also how QGIS3 actually deals with CRS. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch via the comments. I do monitor them. 
haven't had any comments for a while so it'd be great if you could uh, leave one or two and don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching and happy mapping